tech cocktail conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. The quick of it is, um, uh, did two tours of duty in Desert Storm, uh, came out of that, got into professional auto racing, um, I was a chief mechanic in NASCAR for one of the top teams for a while, and that helped me make a good amount of money where I could put myself through college and in grad school after that. And from there, I've just been a serial entrepreneur uh, ever since. Uh, sold one of my last startups, and uh, during that time, went back to school because um, I wanted to generate some new ideas. So I went back to MIT um, and was commuting back from Las Vegas to Boston. And uh, what happened is, is a friend of mine who I had actually served in Desert Storm with. Um, was in the Boston Logan Airport and I was heading back to Vegas and I tweeted and he was on Facebook but nothing told us each other was there and we've been trying to hook up for like 15 years um, and it was really cool and so the, anyways, the long story short is I get home and realize he's, he was there I was totally bummed out and we still hadn't uh, gotten together obviously the, the main reason I started it was um, the frustration of me missing out on that important connection um, so I literally started it that night after that happened to me um, but it's evolved to much more than that I mean I, I look at it as um, we're a platform, uh, although we're shown through an application, whether it's iPhone or Android or even on the web, um, we're really a technology platform that can, uh, can do so many things, it's so robust. And in that is, is to help solve the problem of us missing out on things in life. To me, search is dying. I don't want to have to keep going in and searching on my phone for things to do, people to see, go to my social networks to try to keep up with everybody. I want my phone to tell me when those important things in my life are around me, no matter if I'm at home or if I'm traveling like here in Austin. I look at all these apps coming into the space as a really good thing for, for us because I mean, when we first launched, it's only been eight months, uh, right? This space was quiet and it didn't have a lot of attention and now people are absolutely paying attention. But as far as distancing ourselves, I mean, the biggest thing, number one, is that we're cross-platform. You know, we're just not on iOS, we're on Android and, and on the web. Uh, we're also across the, we're not just on Facebook, we're also on multiple social networks. So we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, uh, Foursquare, LinkedIn, and on and on. Banjo also gives you the power to be in multiple places at once. So it's not just about what's nearby on one or two social networks. It's about, you know, you're from San Francisco or you're from Boston. It's about being able to go to Boston or these other important news where news events are happening and see live on the ground action in real time with people sharing on Instagram or uh, on Facebook. And so it's, you can, it's really cool in that way. The other aspect is, is that our interests change. And so while some might focus on just, you know, you have uh, this one thing in common and this person has this thing in common, so therefore you're a match. No, I, I don't believe that. I believe that our interests change as we change. And so like when I flew here to South by Southwest, my interest when I'm at home might be NASCAR and Dropkick Murphys, but when I come here, I might be looking up Springsteen. So I type in Springsteen in Banjo, and it allows me to see everybody that's here across any of the social networks that are talking about Springsteen, sharing photos of Springsteen, but also that might have had Springsteen as one of their things that they liked in one of their many social network files. Not the one that was just created on Banjo, but one that uh, we were able to see and find. So it's really that true place, that human connection engine that Banjo's building. So that's what I mean by it's a platform, it's not just a, an application. To me, it was when I first started this, uh, from that idea of not missing out on my friend, um, the hardest thing about doing anything in the social space is you have the zero user problem. Um, what that means, quite frankly, is you start and there's nobody there, and then a couple people come, but then they gotta get all their friends to come, and then they gotta get their friends to come. And if you've seen many of the social companies that have started, they failed because they've never been able to overcome the zero user problem. So with Banjo, the minute you open it up, you automatically, before you even add any of your friends or any of your social networks, you see the entire social community. And so you can see what people and what events are happening, what's valuable to you. And as you add your other social networks in, then your friends, you can start sorting by your friends and where, where they're at so you can get those important notifications. But it was, I just didn't want to have to wait and then join another social network for something to be valuable for, for me. So to me it was, when people come into the application, they had to see immediate value. And that was the whole reason by the way we did our crowdsourcing. Our, our number one competitor is ourselves, right? I mean, I have to manage um, you know, how we're going to continue to grow at the pace we are, how we're going to scale. Uh, I don't think any one of us dreamed of growing this fast. I mean, we're going to reach, like I said, almost a million users here, and we're just, we just passed our eighth month birthday. Um, so it's really uh, competing against ourselves, if you will. We always just have a competitive spirit internally uh, of moving very quick. And, and like in auto racing, it's not just about moving with speed, but it's moving with precision. 
and getting feedback. So in auto racing, it's feedback from the car and the driver telling you what to do. From us, it's, it's almost our million users telling us all the time. These are things they'd like to see, things that would make a difference for them. And it's the speed and execution in which our team can turn those things out. That is, that is the big differentiator between us and, and the crowd. I think people hear us talking about social superpowers a lot, um, giving you that ability to be in two places at once. I know the news has been using banjo a lot lately when uh, either a natural disaster like the tornadoes happen or some event happens at a mall that they can't be at. Um, they can put themselves in that place at once. So there's going to be a lot more about you being able to put yourself in a different place and kind of be prepared before you go there. It's got to be the non-stop. I mean, again, I, I don't want to keep always going back to auto racing, but I mean, it's, I'm an adrenaline guy, right? I mean, uh, people who know me know that I race cars, uh, race dirt bikes. Um, I like to do anything that's really, really fast. And in startup life, especially in this space, you have to move extremely fast. It's all about execution. We can all have a great idea, but it's whoever's going to execute it first. So I thrive on seeing a new idea from like a, 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 some of our members or users of the uh, of Banjo will say to us, hey, it'd be great if you had this. I love being able to whiteboard that out in the morning and literally by that night it's coded, it's put into the app and we've already shipped it out for people to start beta testing in literally less than a day. And I just love that kind of style of execution and then that you can just keep that feedback circle from your users coming back that quickly. So to me, that's, that's number one. Don't get bogged down um, with worried about having to try to raise money um, and trying to monetize too quickly. I, I meet with so many entrepreneurs today that say, well, I've got to do this and compromise on my startup in order to raise money, or I have to compromise on the dream of what a startup was supposed to be to monetize. Um, and I always just tell them, you know, you need to follow what your dream is because if you're not passionate about what you're doing, no matter how much money you raise, it doesn't matter. You're, you're, number one, it's probably not going to be successful, but number two, at the you have to be true to yourself, right? And so, um, I mean, you have to raise money in order to go on, obviously. Um, but it's about not comprom you know, not compromising with your with yourself and your beliefs, um, and just staying true. And so that's one probably the number one thing I tell people.